Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be doing another combat analysis, but this time on the Magicka Sorcerer. Okay, if you guys want to get better at PvP, or if you're looking for some tips and tricks that the top tier PvP players use, look no further. We'll be covering everything in today's video. So, let's get into it. Welcome back guys. Before we get into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. You guys help feed my crippling addiction to sticky notes. Now I literally cannot forget anything. So let's get into the analysis. Okay guys, so it's important to know what we're running first off. So right now we're running Iron Blood on the back bar. We're running Spinners on the front bar. We're running a mythic item set called Sithis. Sithis is amazing. If you guys don't know what that is, it should be here on the screen. And yeah, that's pretty much what we're using. So let's get into it, shall we? So right now, there's three guys here. So one dude's just kind of floating around because, you know, he's just kind of trolling us. So we got DK and Nightblade with acuity. I see his health is low, right? Typically, I'm always going to target the lower health people when I can, especially when acuity is proc. So you'll see here that because acuity is proc and also he's low health, anytime I see acuity on anyone, I don't want to go on the defensive yes you can't go on the defensive you know in most cases but because i know on my iron blood is up which gives you 30 percent damage mitigation it's important to focus someone who has acuity up because that's typically their only burst window so what i'm doing right here in this clip is singling him out yes it also helps he has low health but that's what i'm doing so because i applied pressure during his acuity proc you can tell you he has an acuity proc which gives you 100 crit is when he's glowing blue like that i do that so he's pressured and cannot get off his burst without dying and this happens like every 20 seconds so that was like the first point i want to point out here so i do roll dodge a lot i'm running double wards using crit surges the hills typical i'm just kind of testing the waters right now so anytime you have a, a multi-man streak like that kind of go back always do it even if you're just kind of like testing the waters Right here, I wasn't really doing anything. I just kind of want to see how these guys reacted. But because I saw them lined up here, I always go for a shriek. Like 100% of the time. So, not really goes in stealth, unfortunate. I noticed my iron blood is up. So, right now I'm pretty low in resources because I dicked around for way too long. This is something you do not want to get in the habit of doing. Don't play with your food too long. Okay, because that can turn around to bite you in the ass a lot. Notice we have literally like eight different debuffs on us. So the first thing I do, I feel like I'm getting pressured. I need to get back resources. I drop Frank or the Atro. The reason I'm dropping the Atro is because I have the AoE more, first of all, because he does a lot of AoE damage. Whenever you apply a ward, Frank also gets the ward. So he's pretty much unkillable, to be honest. You get a health buff as well for having your pet out. But most importantly, I'm using him to line a sight. Because I'm out here in the open, anyone can hit me from any angle. So I'm dropping Frank here to... Like, it's like a deployable cover. Like I'm not really relying on his damage too much. It's mostly line of sighting. And it's to get resources back and try to single someone out. Notice I streak away from Frank, which is questionable on my part. Because right here, I could have possibly died. I got caught in a CC. Um... Luckily, I got the roll dodge off. We eat a Dawn Breaker there, so I'm going back to Frank to try to line of sight. You know, you can bitch about Sorks all you want, but at least I'm not streaking away, right? So we get yoinked out from cover. That's really a play on our opponent. So right now, what I'm doing right here, this this is typically what I do not do because I have thousands of hours on a sword. Typically, I don't want to, but I don't think I'm going to be able to kill these guys right off. I just want them to hurt. I want them to chase me a little bit to expend a little bit of resources. You guys can do this. If you're by yourself in open world, anything goes, right? Anything you can do to kind of thin the herd. So typically I only streak two times. This time I streak like four times because I was a bitch. I'm not going to lie. I was a bitch by doing this, but it worked out in the end. So we was able to get one guy off by himself. Um, this mag DK here. And essentially, we're going for the you know basic burst. You always, you always. Uh, I used to be under the impression you wanted to get your curse off and then execute, but I found it's way more important to have your execute already on them before you go in for your curse. Anytime you see an EG, you try want you want to try to interrupt that. Notice I'm keeping the pressure on this guy. He's gonna run back to his friends, which is exactly what I wanted. He goes for an all-in Donnie. So we blocked right there, right here, guys. This is why you have to be aware of your surroundings. So right here we ate the Donnie, that's cool. But the way I had my camera tilted, 
I can see this guy. <laughs> it looks it's pretty pretty funny when you actually freeze in a freeze frame. But I see him out of the corner of my eyes leaping in, and I block perfectly at the right time, like just in time. Now, if I was to have taken that leap, I could have possibly died there. I'm not gonna lie. I could have probably died there. But that's important when having you know really good reaction time, just being aware of your surroundings. So here I'm just kind of doing the same old, same old. The acuity procs. Big mistake on mine. I should have focused the acuity guy more. Notice I went for the streak. The reason I went for the streak again there is because more than two lined up. It was very beneficial. And right now, since we killed one guy, now it's a 1v2, which is much more stomachable than 1v3. It does get exponentially harder the more people we have on you. So Iron Blood is up. There's really nothing to note here. I'm just trying to spam as much as I can. So it's important to keep up pressure. When you see low opponents, right? Even if you're super low on Magicka, it's so important to keep up the pressure because you never know when a, like a 15k breath life is going to come through and boost them up to full, right? So always be on the aggressive. So even if your magic pool is low, guys, you're a Magicka sorcerer, you have dark conversion play around, notice my health is completely capped off, my stamina is completely capped off, okay? One habit I want you guys to, to get into is if you're on controller, it is really hard to streak 180 and then frag back towards you. Get in the habit of throwing your frags first before you go in for your streak combo, okay? So it's going to soften them up. It, it will work out so much more often. You will hit so much more of your burst if you do it in that order. I know it's not optimal, right? But if you're on control, that's what you have to do. PC guys, you really don't have to worry about that. You have the mobility to where you can whip your camera around and get the frag off anyway. Another thing to note before we continue here is that sometimes you want to hold your frag usually when you streak what people will do they will roll dodge and if you throw your frag it's completely wasted just patience have patience with your frags okay that is the biggest thing when it comes what separates a good sork from a bad sork usually a sork will just toss out frags really nearly just be patient for the cooldown on the roll dodge you know most people don't roll three times in a row just wait for the roll dodge and then you can smack them with a frag so right now i'm recording i'm just trying to type ggs this is super important at the top left hand corner i don't have a cursor uh glowy thing please guys be positive don't be toxic in open world if someone messages you telling you're trash or whatever you know just type in ggs you know uh, better luck next time you know you can be a little toxic right but don't be flat out blatantly like just rude okay cyrodiil is all about competition it's really good just for the love of god if anything from this video please just be kind to one another okay so the third guy ran off uh he's back well i have a meteor i don't want to play around with this guy um he's somehow a grand overlord at, i don't know if he's deserving or not but uh Nice little fade away here. So, if you're new to this work, a very basic combo is to have your your curse and your execute on them, and then right before the meteor hits, you typically want a streak, which is unblockable, undodgeable. The meteor will hit, and then if you're really on point, you can 180 frag or frag before you go in for your streak. Whatever word you want, it really doesn't matter. But Hopefully that was enlightening, guys. I know it wasn't much. It was a very basic 1v3, but some of the key concepts I want you guys to take away. Don't be afraid to disengage from a fight to kind of thin the herd, so to speak, and reposition yourself. Always think of your terrain. Notice I was out here in the open. That's why I dropped Frank instead of a big dick ultimate like Meteor to give me some line of sight potential and give you a chance to kind of reset the fight and uh, you know get your bearings straight. Also, your build does matter because this is kind of like a brawler mag sork. I'm able to just stand out here in the open and take all these hits. This typically would not work on a lot of builds. So hopefully this was very informative for you guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to have a PvP top five. Please submit your clips to Horcrux ESO at yahoo.com if you want to be featured in the next weekly PvP top five. I was going to try to do one tomorrow, but I do not have clips. So that's why I'm saying this to you guys. Don't forget to eviscerate the like and subscribe button. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.